Hello, this is Max from makeitconscious.com. Coming to you again from my beautiful, slightly chilly, but slightly noisy balcony in Batumi, Georgia. Now, I'm sure the YouTube algorithms probably will be pushing this down the rankings because it will detect some kind of background noise and it will say people aren't interested in this. And there's wisdom in that, but I also think it's a shame that we, I don't want to say shame, but it, it's in some ways unskillful to reject that which we find displeasing, as though in doing so we will maintain our peace of mind, because of course, inevitably, we're going to come across sounds, sensations, thoughts, ideas that we don't like and that we find displeasing and painful, and it's only by going towards those things that we actually learn to overcome them. We make that resistance conscious and move towards a more resilient, peaceful, calm, and joyful state of mind. This ties in very much with what I'd like to talk about today, which is the Jungian concept of individuation. So I'm grab a chair, pull that up. It's uh, An idea that's often overcomplicated, I think, but if there is anything that, that can be overcomplicated, the idea of individuation is worthy of that because it is one of the, it is the most profound goal that a human can aspire to, and it is the most rewarding journey that a human can embark on. I would go so far as to say that Attaining towards this goal of individuation is the path that we're all on, whether we realize it or not. It goes by many names, it's described in many different ways, but it is in essence the purpose of the psyche and the purpose of our existence here as humans. The word individuation was coined by Jung, and he described it as this path of attaining to wholeness. Now, what does that really mean? What does it mean to become a whole? Well, this whole idea is based on the premise that our minds, from the moment we attain to consciousness and the moment we begin to differentiate in our early lives, our minds are not whole. And the reason they're not whole is because there is a huge ocean of unconscious material and because we become conditioned to strive towards certain aspects of that and push away other aspects of that as a means to survive and as a means to attain social belonging in our environment. And this is absolutely necessary. This is, uh, this is not a mistake. This is a very useful function of mind. It's how our minds enter the world and survive in the world. However, it's, it's really only the first series of stages on our journey here as humans. It is, if anything, like a launch pad to the real work of becoming a unique and realized individual. And that is the process of individuation. Some people refer to it as becoming our true selves or realizing our true selves. And that's a helpful way, I think, but it's also a somewhat misleading way because any good Buddhist will tell you that there is no self or that there is no permanent self and they may reject the idea on that basis. But actually these two ideas are completely compatible because in fact, they're actually aspiring to the same thing, I would say. The Eastern spiritual goal of enlightenment is the same thing. It's the same thing. They're described in different ways. People have split the hairs on these things, but they are both essentially an attainment of wholeness and all the benefits that come with that. So when, for example, a Buddhist might encourage you to loosen your grip on the self, this is very much in line with the process of individuation which is about letting go of the persona, the idea of ourselves, the way we see ourselves in the world, the mask we face up to the world with, and 
therefore our ideas and expectations about how we ought to behave in the world because none of this is who we truly are. So you can see that the idea of individuation comes from a similar spot to the Eastern traditions. It's building on this understanding that what we think we are and who we identify as is not our true self and actually there is a inner true self that is pure awareness unbound by the conditioning that we've acquired through our early life and growing up through our experience of life and that holds us back now why is that such a dangerous thing to be held back what's so what's so wrong with that you know when life coaches talk about letting go of what's holding you back okay great like but but, but why like what's why is that such a wonderful thing here's why and it, it is the most wonderful thing because all of our pain and suffering comes from the belief the assumption that we exist as a separate self that leads us to crave that leads us to chase what's pleasant push away what's unpleasant and necessarily cast objects into the shadow and experience the pain as a direct result of seeking out pleasure and so by letting go of these con this conditioning we can exist in the world in a way that is much lighter much more peaceful much more joyful and is able to encounter any and all situations without pain and suffering associated with it very hard to be displeased when you are uh, low in your conditioning and so the, the way in which this is done is to there's really three aspects to it I, I, I at least in my mind the first is through understanding so the way we relate to the world are understanding that what we experience is our own mind and that it's not the external world doing it to us but it's how our mind is relating to the world that is the problem and at the same time what we perceive and we interpret as the external world is and can only be our own mind so this builds into our understanding uh, which is the, the thir first of three cornerstones on the path to individuation the second would be how we choose to behave in the world because if we behave in a way that reflects a belief that we do exist as a separate self then that self is going to want to attain what it perceives as good push away what it perceives as bad and that is going to clash with the wants and needs of the other selves that we encounter in the world and so it's very important to adopt wholesome conduct this doesn't mean being all nicey nicey and uh, doing what is good so to speak because by doing merely what you think is good you then create uh, by association something that's bad so I don't like to think in these terms of good and bad or at least I don't think it's the most accurate way to describe the conduct required on the path to individuation and that a more useful way of thinking about it is wholesome and unwholesome which means conducive to the whole conducive to wholeness and conducive to separation so the second cornerstone of any anyone's journey to individuation is wholesome conduct and the third would be mental discipline now this builds on the understanding and it builds on the conduct but this is really about paying attention to one's own mind being actively interested in remaining conscious and making the unconscious conscious doing that proactively doing it responsively to events that we encounter seeking out situations that bring our unconscious to light and lastly it entails dedicated practice of mental discipline which we tend to call meditation uh, and that is when you are dedicating time and focus purely to the pursuit of building mental discipline so that's the third cornerstone of what anyone on that path to individuation is the mental discipline and so there's a final point I want to make here because I just want to keep this a brief video but that is that contrary I'd say to what a lot of the Eastern traditions teach there is no final end point of individuation that can be permanently attained within a human lifetime because it's an ongoing journey there is no ultimate end point 
there is the experience of the endpoint. There will be moments for someone on this journey who experiences a fully integrated mind. But that is not the same as saying that a human who experiences that will attain to that state permanently whilst alive. There are still going to be unique perspectives. There is always going to be an unconscious, both personal and collective. There is also always going to be wisdom that you don't yet acquire consciously. There's always going to be an unconscious and there's always going to be a benefit to making it conscious, to bringing that to light. And so that's really just a very short summary of a very complex topic, but a, a topic that is profound, deeply rewarding, and well worthy of plenty of discussion. But just for today's video, I wanna keep it very short, simple and succinct, and give you this overview of individuation. Now, I will just make one more point, which is that the path of individuation is necessarily something that an individual cannot do on their own and <laughs> one simple reason for this is that no one is on their own like nothing we experience is purely internal like we interface with the external world all the time and what we're really experiencing there of course is a reflection of our own minds and so not only is the world an opportunity to see what's going on in their own mind in terms of how the mind relates to it but by engaging with an individual such as a coach or a spiritual teacher who understands the individuation process, that is one of the most highly leveraged actions that a person can take in order towards uh, building a peaceful and joyful mind. So having a guide, having a coach is extremely effective, extremely powerful, because this is an individual who can kindly and compassionately help you see where uh, your mind is holding on or, or certain aspects of your unconscious that it would just be impossible to see on your own. So that's all for me guys, hope that was useful, I shall chat to you next time.